by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, would we magnify your holy name on Christ. Second book of Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 14a. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all of his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in the house of Cedar, but the ark of God stays in the tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord. Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And the evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled, 
and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The portion of the Psalter appointed for this day is Psalm number 89, part 2, verses 20 through 37, and is found on pages 715 and 716 in the Book of Common Prayer. Congregation will answer in the whole verse. We will start and end with the refrain. The Lord is made covenant with David. I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. If my hand will go with the past, and my heart will make it strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will press his foes before him, and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He shall say to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn, and I will the kings of the earth. I will keep my love for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. I will establish his line forever, and his throne in the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law, and do not walk according to my judgments, if they break my statutes and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their transgressions with a law of God and their iniquities with a lash. But I will not take my love from them, nor let my faithfulness prove false. I will not break my covenant, nor change what has gone out of my lips. Once more, I am sworn by my goodness. I will not lie to David. His line shall endure forever, and his throne is the sun before me. He shall stand fast forevermore like the moon, and abide in the witness of the sky. The Lord has made a covenant with David. Peace to 
you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So that you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Here, what the Spirit is made to God's people. Thanks be to God.
found themselves temporarily homeless. The name of the shelter was Emmaus House. And just about every Wednesday during the 17 years I was chaplain to the sisters in Utica, just about every Wednesday I would go to the Emmaus House to have supper with the staff and with the guests who were living there. Because after supper, it was expected that I would meet everyone at something they called devotions. Which meant that I would read one of the scripture lessons from the daily office lectionary for Wednesday, usually the gospel. Say a few words about what I had just read, and we would end with prayers and the Lord's Prayer. Well, the readings appointed for today bring to mind this one Wednesday, some years back, when I read from the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, where Jesus goes to Matthew, the tax gatherer, and says to him, follow me, and is then criticized for keeping company with sinners. In response to such criticism, Jesus says, St. Mark tells us, Jesus says, I came not to call the virtuous, but sinners. And one precocious young lady at the Emmaus house, sitting at the table, one precocious young lady said with great fervor, it's my sin that keeps me from following the right way. And I responded by saying, don't go focusing on your sin. Keep your attention, like Matthew, keep your attention riveted on following Jesus. That's a classical blunder, you know. Becoming so focused on the pres pres presence of, of imperfection that we become convinced of the absence of grace. <coughs> that spiritual blunder has a very long history of causing in individuals and societies to think that God wants us to do things and promulgate laws that defeat sin, rather than believing the appeal from God's Son to simply be faithful. It has a long history of causing us to think that there is no grace without perfection. That our sin alienates us from God. Alienates us from the right way, as I don't really This is the very thing that St. Paul is trying to abuse, disabuse us of in his epistle to the Ephesians. When he reminds us in chapter 2, when he reminds us to remember that you were at one time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of God's household, and strangers to his covenant of grace. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were far off have brought, been brought near in the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who has made us one by abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity. At the Christian festival of Christmas, we revel in the knowledge that the Most High God incarnates of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. We revel in the knowledge that the Most 
Most High God did come to us, to dwell with us, who are of a humble spirit, like Mary, or who are of a contrite heart, like Joseph. At the festival of Christ Christmas, we revel in the knowledge that God did come to us, not because we deserved the visit, but because we needed it. God has seen our ways, and he has come to us. He has come to us not to tell us where we are wrong, but to urge us to repent, to urge us to come out of ourselves, to urge us to come away from gazing at our sins and imperfections, and to run wildly in the direction of God, so that he might heal us. Just as St. Mark shows us happening for those who come to Jesus, the incarnate God, and the gospel of faith for today. But more than that, St. Paul says, more than that, Jesus coming to us to simply tell us many things so that we can recognize that God's grace has plucked himself down in the midst of our sin and imperfection. And it is neither hor horrified nor repelled by us, but has compassion for us. More than that, St. Paul also tells us that in Christ we have brought, when brought near to one another in the blood of Christ. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, we remember whenever we gather to share the one bread. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to the Father's will, a perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. And because one has died for all, St. Paul writes in his second epistle to the Corinthians, in chapter 5, beginning at the 14th verse, because one has died for all, therefore all have died. And those who live, live no longer for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Jesus is our peace, St. Paul tells us today. Jesus is our peace because he has abolished in his flesh the power of sin to control us. He is giving us something else to look at, apart from the ugliness of our sins. Oh sure, we can and we will continue from time to time to air and spray like lost sheep as we confess on page 41, and page 62, and page 320 of the prayer. <coughs> we will from time to time air and spray like lost sheep. But we are not sheep without a shepherd. We have a shepherd who has defeated sins, lions, tigers, and bears, who want to drag us off into the darkness. We have a shepherd who has defeated our lions and tigers and bears by dying upon the cross in order to reveal to us the beauty of God the Father's unconditional love for each and every one of us without distinction. At the cross, Christ pronounced unconditional forgiveness for all of humanity, making us one. And at the empty tomb, Jesus revealed the power of his grace to dispel the darkness by undoing the effects of sin. 
this is the thing that is at the heart of the Christian faith. It is the very foundation of your baptism into the resurrection of life. That in the midst of human sin, there is grace. And the grace of God in Christ Jesus does not require perfection from you. It only requires faith. Let us confess the faith that makes our lives perfect. Saying together with that seed of truth.
Jesus, in your presence is healing and strength. We bring to you our sick and suffering, especially Jim and Deb, Mr. and Mrs. Maine, Myron and Nancy, Richard and Mary, Al, Alexandra, Andrew, Anne, Barb, Bernice, Betty, Bob, Bree, Bruce, Dan, Darren, Dale, Deanna, Debbie, Diane, Donna, Doug, Florence, Gina, Glenn, Greg, Harriet, Holly, Jackie, Jan, Janet, Jeff, Jennifer, Jerry, Jim, Joe, John, Judy, Julie, Lauren, Linda, Margaret, Mary, Molly, Nancy, Patrick, Peter, Patsy, Sally, Sarah, Scott, Shirley, Sophia, Steve, Vita, and Vinny. Compassionate God, have mercy on us. For those observing birthdays this week, especially Wes Matthews, and those observing anniversaries this week, especially the two of us. <laughs> Compassionate God, have mercy on us. For those serving in the armed forces of the United States, especially Danielle Capriccioli, Sophia Surgeon, Duncan LePage, Ethan LePage, <coughs> David Marcinski, Jessica Ramirez, and Anthony Wurst. Compassionate God, have mercy on us. Loving God, we commend to you the dying and the dead, especially Tom Smith. Bring them, we pray, into that heavenly country where with apostles and prophets they will live forever with Jesus Christ. Compassionate God, have mercy on us. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all that you will be for them. For you are gracious, O Lord our souls. And to you in glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God.
sanctified them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Who on the night he was betrayed, took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Hey, this is my body which is given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new cup shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. But every bread, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. To celebrate his death and the resurrection of the as we wait for the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world around us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily, worthily serve the world in this day. The risen Lord will know be to us and break it of bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom we you and the Holy Spirit of your church give honor and glory and worship. Generation to generation. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are going to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the 
Blessing of God Almighty, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be most you.